Today I have the pleasure of speaking with David Dreisinger. David, how are you? Just fine today, thank you. I'm really excited about interviewing you because you're of course a doctorate in metallurgical engineering, is that correct? That's correct, from Queen's University in Kingston. Okay, so we have a metallurgy expert and that's one of the hottest topics on Investor Intel right now because everybody claims they have a process to extract rare earths and of course you're with Search Minerals, right? That's correct. So can you start by telling us what Search Minerals has? Well, Search Minerals has done exploration in Labrador at three different sites, um, including the Port Hope Simpson belt, uh, the Red Wine Complex, and also up in Strange Lake. The Port Hope Simpson area is our wholly owned area of, of investigation, of exploration. And we've identified the Foxtrot deposit at that site, which we now have an, uh, an indicated and inferred resource for, which we've been focusing our metallurgy development on. Now, your stock was up 14.5% in February, okay, and so we have a rare earth company and many of us are very bull on, bullish on rare earths and you have a lot of heavy rare earths, is that correct? That's correct. About 20% of our rare earths in our deposit are heavies, including the all-important dysprosium, which is very much in vogue in terms of the magnetic materials. Yes, dysprosium is definitely in vogue, but so tell me more about this. You have a patent pending? Yes, we do. We, we uh, went through initial metallurgical development back in 2012 and did the classical uh, upgrading to make a concentrate chemical treatment to extract the rare earths and made a rare earth, uh, uh, mixed rare earth oxide as a final product. And then realized that that was probably too expensive to do all those different steps with our material. So we went back and looked at it and tried to simplify the process and came up with a direct extraction method. All right, can you tell us more? I sure can. So the direct extraction method, instead of uh, crushing and grinding to very fine size our, our mineral, we uh, basically just crush the material to a fairly coarse size, about three millimeters, and then we apply modest amounts of acid and uh, heat that acid or mixture to about 200 degrees Celsius, about the same temperature as cooking cookies in the oven at home, and then uh, allow the acid to penetrate into the rock and make the uh, rare earth minerals converted into a water-soluble form. So it starts as a rare earth mineral that's insoluble, becomes soluble with the acid application, and then after water leaching, the rare earths are extracted from the coarse rock into the solution, from which we then recover our mixed rare earth product after some chemical purification steps. Of course, if you're an audience member of Investor Intel, you will appreciate that the extraction of rare earths is not like pulling gold from the ground. It's very complex. So what is your real competitive advantage with your particular process? If you can just dumb it down for me, please. Well, we think that we're both low cost and also scalable. So at, at Foxtrot, we've got uh, uh, the mineralizations down to 400 and some meters and open at depth. Uh, we could have an open pit and an underground mine at Foxtrot. Uh, we'd like to focus on something small and open pit, so it's low cost. Uh, have, say, 500 tons a day of, of ore being processed through our uh, proprietary process, and then recover small amounts of rare earths, about 1,200 tons a year, uh, to then go off to the rare earth uh, refineries. So we have something that uh, should be very low cost in terms of the, the plant that extracts the rare earths, and modest amounts, so we're not looking for very large capital costs for the new uh, uh, processing facility. Well, obviously this is advantageous. I mean, everyone wants scalability, but it's advantageous for your capex. Can you tell me what this really means? I mean, some of these companies have thrown out term or thrown out amounts such as one billion dollars for a processing facility. What are we looking at for you? We're, we're looking to get down to a level that's financeable by a small company like Search. We're looking for something under a hundred million dollars all in to our first increment of capital. Uh, we're currently commissioning a study, have commissioned a study with SNC Lavalin to uh, cost out our metallurgical process. So far we've been waving our arms and saying it's going to be cheaper, but we want to get an independent uh, engineering validation that it's going to be less expensive than, than uh, our previous process or that other competitive processes it would be. So we're going to get a, within the next two months or so, a good capital cost, operating cost for the processing. Now, I have noticed, I'm so happy that you brought up SNC. Yes. You know, we have a company that many of us may not be very familiar with. Of course, you will be after the next, after this interview. But with Search Minerals, you have hired some of the best engineering firms in the world. I was very impressed. You've got SNC and you're using the best in the industry and you have an incredible management team. In fact, I encourage our audience to go to the website and see who they have on this uh, management and board of directors. Can you tell me a little bit more about this? SNC Lavalin, of course, are one of the world's largest mining and metals companies in the engineering sector. Uh, I've worked with them all over the globe on different projects and different commodities. 
and they've got a special expertise in, in uh, the types of plants that we're looking at here, which are innovative small plants with a bit, a bit of chemistry associated with them. So we went to them as being a very good uh, uh, source of expertise to help us get a good cost for our plant. All right, so I know this is not your area of expertise, but what should we as shareholders anticipate in the next couple of quarters? What are you striving for? What we're striving for is we're with the process, we expect to uh, first of all get a cost number. So we're going to get a capital and operating cost, which we then can put into a revised PA for the Foxtrot deposit. So we'll get a revaluation of the, the Foxtrot deposit with the, the smaller scale, lower cost uh, processing option. We're also looking to uh, take our process through a demonstration pilot plant. So we want to take it to a larger scale at uh, one of the local mineral labs here in Canada, which would allow us to get all the engineering information required to go to our next level, which would be to uh, do a, a bankable feasibility study. Uh, we're looking at engaging uh, on the environmental side to get our baseline studies put in place. We're looking at all the different things that need to be done to get us to the, the end of the line in terms of being able to build a mine at uh, Foxtrot and actually start to make rare earths. I'll tell you, Dr. Dreisinger, I would love for you to come back again. Thank you for joining us today. Thank you very much. My pleasure.